God, that is a busy riff. And if you are an Iron Maiden fan, I am sure you will recognise that purgatory. And I have to say, when you're playing it, it does feel like purgatory when you're playing it. God, that is a workout indeed. Now, you're probably saying, I've seen it different. And to be honest, yes, I have seen it played different. Uh, it's very, very hard to find a video of Iron Maiden playing this. I, I've searched around on YouTube, look for it. Couldn't find anything anywhere that really shows that the guitar has been played. However, I did see it being performed by Paul Diano's band and also the glamorous Iron Maiden's band. Now, I would have thought them two bands with their connections back to Iron Maiden would probably be playing it right. And when I compared both videos between the two, they was playing it the same way. Now, I'd seen tabs written and uh, they wasn't moving up to this chord at the top. You saw me flying up the fretboard there to the fifth fret. They was moving across to a D string. Uh, and I, you know, I looked at the tab and I thought, well, the Maidens and Diana, this guitarist, and forgive me, I do not know his name on that video, were moving up the fretboard, moving back, and then moving up the fretboard. It was doing that gymnastics that you saw me. And I thought, really, that would possibly be the right way to play it. And to be honest, it made sense to me because that was an early song. And we all know that around that time of um, Iron Maiden, during that early 80s, it was very, very punk influenced. They did come out of that punk era where the start of the new wave of British heavy metal. And a lot of punk records were played moving up and down the fretboard. It wasn't as clever in the playing of the instrument back in them days as it was nowadays. You know, we didn't have the Steve Vai's, we didn't have the Joe Satriani's. So it did make sense to me. So look through it, played the record really slow, and you could definitely hear that. There was a movement around the fretboard, is what I'm saying. So I personally believe that that is the way, based on them two videos that I saw being performed. So what are we doing on that opening riff? Well, uh, it, it's a lot of power chord work that I'm doing and I'm shifting round. But you are gonna open up with this line. So I'm seeing it as, uh, I'm here on the second fret on the A string playing what would be seen as a B5 chord, but I'm taking the open A string, hammering on. Now I'm doing the pick, now I believe only on the first one, there is a down up. He's doing that. Then, but with the next ones, or the next following three, you're gonna be playing like that. But the first one, two, is gonna be a down up. Now I know I didn't do it on that performance there, but you've got up to the D5. That's where a lot of people were going down to that open D string at that point. But, as I said, the Maidens, Diano. So you're playing O, B, uh, B5. Then you go back to the B5. So, back to the B5. Open string with a finger off, back to the B5. Let me just play that nice and slow for a change. Then, with your little finger is on that fourth fret of the D string, you're gonna slide it up to the G. Sorry, not to, you're gonna slide it up to the fifth fret of the D string, which is a G note. Then you're gonna come across, because your fingers are in that position there, you're on that G there, you're gonna go up to a G5, and move up to an A5. So again, all in slow time. And that there, there's that uh, G note. And then, 
and a quick jump down. Now, what you want to try and avoid, and I found this was the hardest part for me when I was doing this rep, you want to avoid any slides. You don't want to get little slurs between it. What you've got to try and do is kind of cleanly go between that movement. So I'm jumping. Each time I'm not sliding into it because when I really slowed it down on the transcribe which I always use I couldn't hear no slurs I couldn't hear no movement at first I thought it was but again when I saw them playing it they was definitely playing it as a five chord so you've got a again even when I went to the G I didn't slide I would I placed it on Just, I'm going to warn out just telling you how to play it, never mind playing it myself. You've just got to take it nice and slow. Get your hands to understand where they're going in that whole sequence when you're playing that. The next tricky part when you're playing that is to go into the next part of the riff, which is uh, this line. Where you're going. Now the riff itself, you're going to play on the D string, you're going to move from your 7 to the 9 on the D, D string. Now this can be a slide, I play it as a slide. Cross over to the 7th fret on the B. Move down to the 7th fret on the G string. Then you're going to get the first finger and you're going to... So you're doing a 6, 7 and then pull off back to the six and then to the nine. Then you've got the slide again. Okay, that's all right as a riff, that's fine. But you've got to get that movement from that and slide in and move across. Again, I've seen the tub different. They've got it played down here. But again, I'll keep going back to the Iron Maidens. You can clearly see that she's playing it around the five, the seven and the ninth fret position. Again, Diana's guitarist is doing the same thing on that. So you've got to get across from that. And you see the mistake. Onto that. Once you're in there, it's fine. The riff really doesn't have a problem when you're doing that, but it's that initial to get onto that. And you see, every time I'm doing it, I got it right on the video, didn't get it right when I'm trying to show you playing. So you've got to practice that. Getting yourself really comfortable, getting that movement. Now, the next part of the song, this is where the two guitarists party company on the way they're playing. And I can, I can see why. Um, the, the Diani guitarist, he plays the next part like this. <laughs> plays it like that, which is going from an A quickly up to B5. And he's going... And then he's going to an F sharp on the A string, so we're doing F sharp five. So he's doing nine and eleven down a whole tone to an E five. So he's doing seven and nine down another whole tone to a D five five and seven, which puts him back nicely. That spits a nice circular motion on that one very minimal amount of movement uh, for the fingers when you play the iron maidens they moved everything down on to the a and the d string so they started with that chord where you've got a b5 shifted across to the f sharp here on the d and the g string playing four and six moving down to an A, which is a bit more movement. Yeah. 
like that. So uh, let's go and jump in and see what the second guitar is actually doing behind that main riff because that's an actual harmony that's being played. So what I'm going to do, we're going to check that out now. So the second guitar is going to play support to the main riff and it is going to play a and one at the end of each riff. So you've got your main riff playing and then you get and one and one. So you've got to play that twice. It's just an A5 to a B5. Now from there, when you go into the normal riff, uh, which is played through the verses as well, you have got a harmony being played by Adrian Smith. And he's playing this line. All I'm doing there, I'm just taking a slide from the A string, seven to the nine. Cross to the 7 on the D, to the 9, back to the 7, then I do a 9 pull off to the 7 on the D, back to the 9 on the A. And you just repeat that through that main verse section. That is the harmony line that is playing against that main opening line. When it hits the power chord section, you're playing that. You play exactly the same. There's no change there whatsoever on that part. So you've got the main power chords, then it does the harmony, and then it joins in with what Dave Murray was playing. Right, what we're going to do now is look at the second part of the verse, and we can look at this as being riff number two. First of all, let's look what Dave Murray's doing. So he's playing the easy part of this one. And I'm sure you've heard this chord progression in a later Iron Maiden recording. The chord progression by Dave goes like this. Sure you've heard that before. Going from a D for one bar, down to a B flat, so I'm on the A string there, I am playing on the B flat, I'm playing one and three across A and D, up two frets to a C5, and repeat that line four times. And from that part there, that is where Dave goes into his guitar solo section. Let's have a look what is being played behind that by Adrian Smith. So it goes like this. So what am I doing there? Well, I'm going to start off on five fret on the A string. I'm going to play that twice. Then I've got a seven and eight. Down to the six on the low E. Then I'm going to do an eight sliding to the 10 on the A. Back to the eight and then to the 7 on the A, to that. That's your first one, that's the first two bars. Next one starts off identical as the previous one, which is 5, 5, 7, 8. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide up to the 10 from the 8, back to the 8, slide from the 10 to the 12, Cross to the 10 on the D string, back to the 12 on the A. So. Then I go back and repeat the whole thing all over again. So that is what gets played by Adrian on riff number two through the verses. Through the solo, Dave Murray is going back to his harmony riff that he played through the verses. So for the first part of the solo, he's going to play this line. So that lick that we looked at before, it's the same thing. He's going to play that seven times. So you get this seven times. Then he goes to the fast power chord. We're going that. So 
Rob's got to play that. Now, he plays that four times. The end of the fourth time, he's going to go down to a C power chord. So you would get... And he holds that for a count of four. Then he joins in with the melody line that is the back end of Dave Murray's solo. So that is what is being played through the solo section. Now coming out of the solo, we go into the dual harmony section. Now, the solo and the dual harmony section are going to be covered in a separate lesson with the links down below. Come out of the harmony, you go back into the intro riff. We play through a full verse again, all the parts that we've already covered. Then we go back into the harmony section again, and then that takes us to the close of the song. So what we covered in this lesson, we've looked at all of the main parts of the rhythm guitars and the verses. We haven't done the chorus section because the chorus section is that dual harmony. But as I've said, there is a link below and that will take you to the premium channel where I am covering the guitar solos and all of the elements of that harmony through the chorus section. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Purgatory, of course, by Iron Maiden. Challenging intro, as I'm no doubt that you're aware of now after following that through. But do have some fun, enjoy yourself with this song, and I do look forward to our next session together. So until then, this is Jeff Sinker, I'm wishing you well. Goodbye. <laughs>